here. Imagine, if you would please, that you are a six-year-old. Not when you were six years old, but the stereotypical, just happy, excited, six-year-old boy and girl. Like a sitcom kid would be. Go ahead and drop the volume a little bit. There we go. Because we're going to have the opening day of the zoo, and they're going to do a parade through town. And I want you to be the excited little six-year-old, seeing all these animals they are going to be available to you. So go ahead and sit up straight. Go ahead and sit up straight, if you would, please. I'm going to help one person do that here. Go ahead and sit up straight if you would please, sir. Thank you very much. And on the count of three, become as if you are six years old. One, two, three. Six years old, excited and happy because here comes the zoo parade. And coming down the street in front of you are giraffes. Two giraffes. Look how tall those giraffes are. And they take these long strides and a long stride and another long stride. And they're pulling a wagon. They're pulling a wagon. And in that wagon are two lions. There are two lions. And one of the lions looks out of the cage. And it says, <laughs> Hey, that's how a lion says hello. Say hello back to the lions, kids. And behind the, that, that carriage is another wagon, and it's being pulled by elephants. Big, gray elephants. And both elephants at the same time raise their trunk, and they say hi to you. They say, Can you say hi back to the elephants, kids? Say hi back, an elephant. That's right. And behind the elephants in the cage are two seals, and they're bouncing balls back and forth. They're bouncing a ball back and forth, and, you're, ur, 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 and they clap their flippers together. And go ahead and flap your flippers and say hi back to them. Say hi back to them. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And, guess, and the zookeeper comes out. And the zookeeper comes out, and he gives you a fish. Who wants to have a fish to give to the seals? That's right. Reach out and grab a fish. Reach out and grab a fish and take it up to the seal and put it through the cage. Put it through the cage. That's right. And boom, it takes it back. It takes the fish from you. And oh, it is so happy. That is great. And it looks at you and it flaps its flippers again. And flap your flippers back again. That's right. Go ahead. Turn around. Look where your chair is. Go ahead. Sit down. Sit down. There you go. And sleep. There you go. Deeper, more focused. And after that is a beautiful lady. A beautiful lady. And she's got that big old the, the feather hat above. And behind her, she's got a big Irish wolf pile. And he looks at you and he says, Aroof. And he wags his tail back and forth. Bark back to the doggy kitties. Bark back to the doggies. Because, go ahead, bark back. That's right. And behind the Irish wolfhound are three little dogs, and they run back and forth in a, in a zipper-type fashion. They jump over that big old Irish wolfhound back and forth, and they go, yip, 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 yip. Say hi to the doggies, kids. Say hi to the doggy. Yeah, that's right. That's right. All right. Hey, we're coming to the end of, of the zoo parade. Tell you what, I'm going to come back up front here. Everybody go ahead, open your eyes, open your eyes, open your eyes, open your eyes. Whenever I want you to go back into hypnosis just for tonight, if somebody else did it for you, nothing would happen. But while I'm in front of you, if I want you to go back into hypnosis, all I have to do is say one, two, three, and sleep. And you'll immediately return 
back into your hypnotic state. One, two, three, and sleep. Deeper, more focused, relaxed. Very good. Those of you who are not in hypnosis, go ahead and go back into the audience. Give them a big round of applause. Joe, you want to stay on stage? No? Give Joe a round of applause, and if he just happens to go back into hypnosis, we won't hold it against him. A two-person show. A two-person show. This is going to be great. Gentlemen, go ahead and open your eyes. Go ahead and open your eyes. Go ahead and open your eyes. Go ahead and sit right next to him. Go ahead and sit right next to him. <laughs> Because all these other people got so involved watching YouTube, they forgot to go into hypnosis. So we're going to have a two-person show, and I can do that. Don't even worry about it, all right? But you got to be on your A game. I want you to turn your creativity up to 10. Super creative, super funny. Not stupid funny, creative funny. Oh, you got to go in now, don't you? Don't you? <laughs> and funnier. And funnier. <laughs> and I'll keep it clean, I'll keep it family friendly, but we're going to have a lot of fun. I know you're a little disappointed at that, but when you get home, maybe you can do something different. All right? Very good. So, one, two, three, and sleep. Ladies and gentlemen, on this next kid, I'm going to need your creativity a little bit. I need you to be as if you are six-year-olds coming to the zoo. And these two people are going to be animal experts, and I need you to ask them questions about the zoo animals. Will you do that for me? Yeah. Ask, ask like, like grade school questions. The gentleman up on stage, go ahead and sit up. Go ahead and sit up. In fact, open your eyes and stand up. Go ahead and open your eyes and stand up and come up forward. Oh, no. And kind of come up here center, if you would, please. And what is your name, sir? Chad. Chad. Chad, good to meet you. And your name, sir? Aiden. Aiden, very good. Chad and Aiden, you can be in hypnosis standing up, safe at all times. One, two, three, sleep. You are animal experts at the zoo. You are here, the grade school kids are in front of you, standing safe and upright at all times. So you're our animal experts. One, two, three, open your eyes. Kids, these guys are from the zoo. Yeah. 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 You have a question, young man. Yeah, yeah. I want to ask the veterinarian, Chad. Yeah? Um, tell me about the elephant's penises. Chad? <laughs> you know, explain an elephant's penis to this nice little six-year-old boy. <laughs> They're little. <laughs> They're little? Yeah. What what size is the average elephant's penis? Probably like yours. <laughs> so so they're they're very, very small, is that right? Yeah, they're like two inches. And they are big, they're huge animals, but they're really little wieners. Little wieners. So there you got it. Elephants have little wieners. Who else has a question? Yes, sir. How do they poop? Elephants? Oh, yeah. Yeah, elephants. No, no, this is our savanna expert. How do elephants poop? <laughs> they feel it, and then they have to go behind a bush, and they, they squat, and then what? Just then. Go ahead. And then they make sure there's leaves around to make it white, but but then they look around and make sure there's no cheetahs. And they let it out. You know, just out of my own curiosity, if if you were to weigh how much an elephant poops with no cheetahs around, of course, how much would elephant poop weigh? 
in one in one squad. A trillion billion. <laughs> a trillion billion ounces. LBs. Pounds. Very good. Give him a round of applause. Can we have a question about an animal not from Africa? Yes, yes, little girl. What would you like to know? Yes, yes, yes. Come, come on up, come on up. Yes, this this is our good friend Stephen, everybody. Hi, yes, Stephen. Hey, horses are from America, but they always walk and poop at the same time. So I want to know why don't horses stop and squat or lift their leg or something when they poop? There you go. Our our, our American mammal expert. Why do do horses in America walk and poop, not squat and poop? Projectile. <laughs> Tell us what you mean by projectile. These these are little boys and girls. So much. They have so much such big brains that uh, they have so much force. It just it just forces it out. And just bam right there. They don't have to stop. They, they don't have to stop, right? Because, like, if you're being chased by a wolf and you need to poop... You don't have to stop. You don't have to stop. Steven, do you like that? Uh-huh. Okay, thank you. One more question for our animal experts. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Why do, why do monkeys pick little things off a monkey? Why do uh, monkeys pick little things off of monkeys? What, first of all, what are the little things that monkeys are picking off? They're cleaning them for the bath. <laughs> and so they, they're taking care of their family. <laughs> and so they want to make sure there's no like lice and stuff, which are the white things that you get in sixth grade in your hat <laughs> at school in your locker. And so don't be a monkey. <laughs> so don't be a monkey. Very good. Give them a big round of applause. Excellent. Gentlemen, go ahead and have a seat right here in the middle. Each of you have a seat. There you go. And look at me. One, two, three, and sleep. Give them a big round of applause. I have had senior high kids make more noise than that. Give them a big round of applause. All right. Um, this is going to be great. First, I'm touching on the shoulder right now. I want you to go ahead and open your eyes. Open your eyes and go over to stage right for me over there with your eyes open. You go ahead and open your eyes and enjoy this skip. Give Chad a big round of applause. Come, come back over here, Chad. No, no, you can sit down right there. Chad, come over here. Chad, you are, on the count of three, the world's greatest tightrope type walker. One, two, three. You are Shad the Schmarvelous. Shad the Schmarvelous tightrope walker. And we are 35 feet in the air. It's a slightly <laughs> breezy Nebraska day. And your platform is over there, 35 feet away. And you are dressed in black. And you have sparkles and spangles all around you. And when you flex your pecs, you blind people 50 feet away. That's right. Now, you have a trick you do in the middle of the tightrope. What is that trick, that famous trick that has made you famous that you're going to do in the middle of the tightrope for us? <laughs> and what will you do when you turn around? Somersault. <laughs> somersault. Then go. <laughs> You're going to turn around and do what in the middle of the tightrope? Jumping jacks. 
jumping jacks on the tightrope, and nobody else, nobody else in the world does that, do they? No. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Shad the Schmarvelous. Go ahead, Shad. I call him on. Go, Shad, go. 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 It is freezing. It is freezing. There you go. 35 feet up. or just preservation kicked in? He's like a monkey. <laughs> like a monkey. Yeah. Woo! Woo! Yeah. And I just, I didn't want to die. <laughs> Very, and, and he didn't, did he, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> One, two, three, and sleep. In a moment, I'm going to have you both open your eyes. The most amazing thing is going to happen. Chad is going to open his eyes first. He's going to look out into the audience, and he is going to see his most favorite celebrity. Go out into the audience and bring that celebrity back. And after that, uh, my, my other buddy, what's his name? 
Aiden, I apologize, Aiden. When I say Aiden, you're going to open your eyes, you're going to look out in the audience, you're going to see your favorite celebrity and bring them in too. One, two, three. Chad, go ahead and open your eyes. Go, who? Who do you see? Jennifer Aniston. Go get yeah. Jennifer Aniston there, Chad. Go get her. Aiden, open your go eyes. Get Who do you see there, Aiden? No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Go get Vin Diesel. Hey, go on, go get Vin Diesel. Get Jennifer, Jennifer, please join us on stage. Please join us on stage. Vin Diesel, Vin Diesel is coming to join us. Come Vin on up, Diesel. Mr. Diesel. Very good. Jennifer Anderson and, and, and Vin Diesel. Jennifer, Jennifer, if you would come in the middle, Mr. Diesel, go. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and get pictures here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, excuse me, excuse me. All right, very good. So, Jennifer Aniston has had a long, long career. When did you first notice Jennifer Aniston as an actor? Forever. Forever. What was the first role? Was it Friends or before Friends? Along came Tommy. Along came Tommy. Jennifer, what was what was that what was that role like for you? Along came Polly. What what was that like for you? I think it had something to do about a parrot. Something to do about a parrot. And it can I you two move forward, please, just a little bit. Just a little bit. So that I can get behind you here so I'm not blocking any sidelines or anything. Just just a little bit. Just a little bit. There we go. So what what was it like reading a script about a parrot? Polly want a cracker? <laughs> is, is that what you remember from Along Came Polly? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> what was the favorite outfit Miss Aniston wore in that movie? Anything. <laughs> What's your favorite memory from Friends? Um. Every time she's on the screen. <laughs> what was it like knowing how popular you were with so many men in America? It was great. I mean, you've got fans like, like, like this gentleman right here. Fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. If you could tell Jennifer Aniston anything, anything from your heart, mind, soul, or spirit, what would you tell her? You're my everything. I want you to live with me forever. Could we get you to move to Nebraska? She lit. Do you oh, know Jennifer no. Aniston lives in Nebraska? No. <laughs> I didn't either. Tell you what, after the show, you and her can talk about. Maybe you could buy her a drink. What What do you think she would like to drink? Bill Cosby special. <laughs> oh, I don't think so. I don't think so. Give her a big round of applause. What did it feel like to see Vin Diesel out there in the audience? Pretty great. Vin's been around for a long time. What's your first memory of seeing Vin Diesel in action? Uh, probably. Uh, Probably the cars, probably. You mean like it wasn't gone in, no, what? Fast and Furious, wasn't it? Fast and Furious? Or are, you, are you talking about Fast and Furious or are you talking about the animated cars? The little fast cars. Fast and Furious, yeah. 
Now, if you had to choose between Fast and... I mean, put Vin Diesel aside for just a little bit. Fast and Furious versus Gone in 60 Seconds. Which do you think is the better movie? As long as it's got fast cars, you're happy. But fast cars and then they for sure. That just rocks your world, doesn't it? All right, Mr. Diesel, Mr. Diesel. If, if I hit to come between the two of you here, I'll, I'll try to work over here. Boy, you got muscles up here, don't you? Yes. Yeah. I mean, between WWE and Fast and Furious. How do you have time for a social life? I don't. But the impact you have on people, especially in Nebraska, like this, what does that mean to you? I mean, look at that man. Scary. <laughs> but having that kind of impact on people, what is, I mean, look, look at him. You, you are, you are. What, 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 what does that mean to you? Very impressive. Very impressive. What would you like to know about Fast and Furious? What kind of, of question would you like to ask about the movie itself? Uh, how fast do you go? How fast did they let you actually drive those cars? Uh, 100 miles an hour. 100 miles? And if you went like 105, you'd get in trouble? Um, yes. And why is that? Because I don't think he understands how, how just tight this filming thing is. If you go too fast, what happens? He could wreck. And he, I mean, he could get wrecked. Uh, yeah. That's really and then no more Vin Diesel. No. And that would be a? Bad man. That's right. Go ahead and give Vin Diesel, Jennifer Anderson, a big round of applause. Go ahead and take him back in, into the audience. Go ahead and ask for Mr. Diesel. And give him a big round of applause. that you want to be called, 
What name would, would you have picked? Bruce. Bruce, instead of Hayden. 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 And, and, and the reason why Bruce would have been a better name is? It's more masculine. Bruce. Some men call me Bruce. Others call me Batman. Darn right. Darn right. Very good. How about yourself? If, if you could have been able to influence your parents to give you any name, what name would you have had them give you? Steve Fox. Steve Fox? Why, why, why Steve Fox? Because it sounds badass. It does, doesn't it? I mean, say your first name. Chad. Chad! Say, no. Say it with, with feeling. Chad. You get that little bass beat going. Right? But now, now, Steve, what could you do with Steve? Steve Fox would kill you. <laughs> that, that would get my attention. It certainly would. Now, you're originally from what town here? Ashland. Ashland? And you're from what town? <coughs> Broken Bow. Broken Bow and Ashland, two fine little towns. Now, do you know anything about Broken Bow at all? Yes. And do you know anything about Ashland at all? Yes. Okay. So why is Ashland better than Broken Bow? Well, um, we have two water towers. <laughs> why do you need two water towers? Because we're that cool. <laughs> they have two water towers. What, what does your town have? 736 power windmills. <laughs> Before windmills were cool, right? Yeah. What do those windmills do? Provide power for your water towers. <laughs> because, after all, water towers don't pump themselves, do they? What do you have to say about that? His electricity pumps your water. What, what, turn, turn, talk to this man. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, let me tell you that our water towers do pump themselves. <laughs> and there's a lot of water coming out of it. <laughs> a lot of water. A lot of water. <laughs> I'm just here to tell you that Ashland contracted Broken Bow, Nebraska to power their water towers. And it was passed by the government in 2014. And without our windmills and power and generators and energy, Ashland would be basically the Sahara Desert. <laughs> And if you lit a match, if you lit a match, anything? Well, here we are. Ashland. <laughs> I'm not 
not very smart. <laughs> but Broken Bow is a long, long ways away to pump any sort of water. We have long wires. It's a pipe, but friendship is granted. Shake hands! Shake hands! Give it up for Ashland and Broken Bow, everybody! That's right. Go ahead and have a seat. Go ahead and have a seat. Go ahead and have a seat. <laughs> wow. All right. Uh, we've got about ten minutes left here. Um, one, two, three, and sleep. Do either of you have a significant other in the audience? A wife or a girlfriend in the audience? Nod your head if you do. Both of you are single right now? Help me out here, people. They're both single. Well, we're not going to do that skip then. Okay. Uh, I bet we could. I bet. You're both friends of Joe's, aren't you? Are, are they both your friends, Joe? Ron's friends. Ron? Hey, Ron. Come on out. Come on, Ron. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Right, How are you going to break out work? Yeah, we're, we're, we're not going to use the music. Okay. Okay. Use the music. We're, we're going we're gonna to That would be this kind up. of awkward. Yeah, it yeah. would be. Yeah, it would be. Okay. By, by applause, should I pick by applause? Oh, dear. No. Him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the hat Five o'clock. Yeah. 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 Right. Hayden, go ahead and stand up. We're sleeping with him tonight. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> Open your eyes. Look over there. Who do you see? <laughs> there you. What's his name? Uh, I don't know his name. Your name, sir? My name is Rod. Ron. Ron. Very good. Um, would you do me a favor? Give me a clean glass of water and bring it to me. On the count of three, staying standing safely at all times. One, two, three, sleep. The most amazing thing is going to happen. In a moment, you and I are going to start to talk. We'll talk a little bit more about Ashland or what you do for a living, whatever. But the most amazing thing is going to happen. You will not be able to see Ron. You have no idea that he's there. In fact, you don't even remember his name. You have no awareness that he's there whatsoever. One, two, three, make it so. Very good. Are you thirsty? Sure. Hey, it's just water, but go ahead. Go ahead. You can open your eyes and watch the skin. Good enough? I guess. Okay. Very cool. So, your name is Hayden. Yeah. Could have been Bruce. Would have been cool. Oh, that would have been awesome. Well, you, you know, maybe, you know, I'm not saying you should, but maybe. Now, you come from Ashland. Yeah, we are. Now, you got that, that military training base outside of Ashland, right? Sure do. Yeah. And, uh, or am I thinking, I'm... Am I thinking of Aurora? No, it's Ashley, right? Yeah. 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 Definitely, definitely yeah. Have you done any training there? Yeah, once I did. What was that like? Pretty cool. Okay, cool. Uh, what were you doing in the military at that time? Well, I wasn't in the military. Oh, so what were you doing out there? Just working out. Very, very cool. Are, you want one more drink of water? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Very cool. Thank you very much. So anyway, um, what what do you do for a living? Pour some concrete. You're a concrete worker. Now houses, road, or what? Yeah, kind of all the above. Yeah. Concrete is concrete, right? What's the coldest you can pour concrete and still have it set proper? Well, I know I poured when it's snowing outside. And I know I pour when it's hotter than hell outside, so I don't know. And it's set both ways, right? Pretty much. Very, very cool. Do you, tell you what, 
One, two, three, and three. You have now forgotten the number six. No, make it the number four. You've forgotten the number four. You have no idea what the number four is. You're going to count one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, three, two, one. One, two, three, and opening your eyes. Do you want to see a magic trick? Sure, I guess. Okay, cool. Hold up your hands. The other hand, too. And just go ahead and count for me on your fingers. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. <laughs> what? Eleven. Eleven. Eleven fingers. That's eleven fingers. Count again. Do do you normally have 11 fingers? Uh, I think so. <laughs> and so, like having 11 fingers as a, as a concrete pour, is that an advantage? Definitely. Do you need to have special gloves made? <laughs> yep. How do you get a hold of those gloves? Do you have them custom made? Do you order them? What do you do? Uh, order them. Order them. Okay, cool. So how many different pairs of gloves uh, do you go through in, in a year? Seven. <laughs> Seven pairs. Tell you what, let, let, let's start because I mean, most people seem to have ten fingers, right? So let's start with ten and count backwards. One. Ten. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven, six, five, three, three, two, one. <laughs> Negative one. Negative one. Zero. Negative one. Zero. Zero. <laughs> tell you what, tell you what, tell you what. Put this hand down, just for right now. Just count over here. Things of flu. <laughs> that makes sense. 
don't know where you're going to go. Because I'm going to take One, two, three, C run. <laughs> One, two, three, count your fingers properly, hold them out here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Give them a big round of applause, Ron. Thank you very much. Have a seat. Have a seat. Excellent, excellent. All right. Are, are, are you done? Well, yeah, but have a seat over here. Because I got a gift to give you. Over there. If you would both please stand up. I know, I just told you to sit down and I have you stand up. We're at the end of the show. One, two, three, sleep. After I give you the gift that I'm going to give you, that you can do anything you want with, each of you are going to go back into the audience. Hayden, when I say that hypnotist, you're going to stand up and start clapping in rhythm with that hypnotist, that hypnotist. And Shay, you're going to, Shad, I'm sorry, I almost got it right. Shad, after he says that hypnotist, you're going to say on Facebook, because that's where the show is, I'm sorry, where the announcement of when the show is going to be on YouTube. And so this is known, gentlemen, as shameless marketing, all right? Because I want people to remember that if they ever want to hire me for any other event, post proms, county fairs, fundraisers, holiday parties for their employment, they can call me, they can get a hold of me as that hypnotist on Facebook. And you two are going to help me do that because I hope you guys have a lot of fun tonight. But also, that's where I'm going to announce when the show is up on YouTube. And guess what? That's going to be under that hypnotist too. So when I say that hypnotist, you're going to say that hypnotist. You're going to give him time to say on Facebook and you're going to get the crowd going back and forth to chant that, chant that with you. If that's acceptable to each of you, go ahead and nod your heads. Very good, very good. You're each going to do me one other favor. Um, when I say, ladies and gentlemen, Hayden, all of a sudden you become the world's greatest voice coach, and I am going to be saying, ladies and gentlemen, all wrong. And you're going to give me the most outrageous way to say, ladies and gentlemen, but you're doing it for my own good to advance my career. It's very important to you because you know I'm going to give it back to you. You always pay it forward. Shad, when you hear me say, um, I hate it when I drop nouns, uh, Strike Zone, Strike Zone Omaha, you are going to jump up and yell, it's great. Strike Zone Omaha, and you're going to jump up and say, it's great. And you're going to get everybody around you to say, it's great, too. If that's acceptable to you, nod your head. Very good. Both of you open your eyes. I'm going to count from one to five. As I do, you're going to fully emerge from hypnosis. Being fully emerged at the count of five, if you're not fully emerged, you cannot leave the front of this stage. I'll even emerge you fully, but I expect you to be fully emerged at the count of five. As far as I'm concerned, you can remember the entire show. I want you to remember the entire show, but if you want the mystery of saying, I don't remember the show, you can go ahead and have that mystery. But I want to give you this gift. Both of you look at me. I want you to think of one thing that if you began to feel it, do it, or believe it, your life would begin to improve. Something for you. I'm not going to ask you what it is. It could be in your personal life, your family life, your professional life, education, if that's part of your life, but something that would benefit you that I'm not going to ask about. 
And as I count you up into your conscious mind, fully aware when you go to sleep tonight, you're going to sleep deeply and solidly. You're going to wake up refreshed in the morning. By Monday, you're going to be back to a normal wake, sleeping and waking cycle. But whenever you hear that little voice reminder that you really should feel, do, or believe, whatever that positive thing is, you go, oh yeah, that's right. It is not a compulsion. It does not get in the way of your regular life. It helps you improve your regular life. Does that make sense? And it's nobody's business what it is you picked. Here's the thing. You now know how to take your own selves into hypnosis. All hypnosis is self-hypnosis. I gave you a skill today. You can take yourself into hypnosis anytime you want to, when it's safe. You're still totally aware of everything going around you. Your phone rings, you go, should I emerge and answer the phone? Or should I wait and just find out what the phone number was afterwards? You're in total control while you're in hypnosis. Did I make you do any of these skits today? No, you had fun with them, didn't you? And that's the whole thing. But here's the thing, after you get that one little thing in place, you can go, well, why don't I do the next thing? And it could be in continuation, or it could be something totally new in your life, so I'm giving you this gift. Let, him, let that waking state awareness come all the way at the beginning of your feet. Let it come up your legs, let it come up into your body, and you're starting to feel more and more awake more and more in your conscious, logical state. I want you to remember the entire show for the next two or three days, even longer if you like. Let that little reminder, whatever that little positive thing is, keep you going in that direction. The more you reinforce it, the easier it becomes for you until it becomes a natural part of your belief or activity in whatever will benefit you. Three, let that energy come up even more. Red, 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 red. It could be the color of a taillight, stoplight, or a red neon sign. But even that's going to remind you gently to keep that little thing in process in your life until it's just a natural, positive part. Four, let that total waking state energy totally bring you back into your waking conscious state, driving safely home tonight, sleeping deeply and soundly, waking up refreshed in the morning, and to one more big round of applause, five, fully emerging all the way up, all of the state, as far as I'm concerned, remember the entire show, you two are great, you two did an entire hypnosis show without any of those chickens help, well, Ron help. Ron, give Ron a big round of applause, too. And give Joe a big round of applause for inviting me to do this. This is very strong. There he is. He was behind a very pretty woman. Yeah. You're married to him, aren't you? That's okay, I'm married, too. My daughter's going to be married, but that's another thing altogether. And Steve, who gave us our wonderful music. Give him a big round of applause, too. Ladies and gentlemen. Girls and boys? Yeah. Why, why girls and boys? Because we're girls and boys. <laughs> but, but they're all adults. Yeah. With childish mindsets. <laughs> well, okay, let, let me give it a turn. Let me, let me. Girls and boys, it's been a wonderful time. Woo! <laughs> so, yeah. well, let, let's see how they react. Let me just try. Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, you're, you're right. It's kind of like cold pancakes, isn't yeah. it? No, no, let me. Girls and boys? Yeah. Yeah. My man! Yeah! Go ahead and have a seat. Give him a big round of applause. It has been a pleasure entertaining you at the Strike Zone Omaha after party. I've absolutely loved it. Again, Joe, thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Um, my name is Edward Wonder. I live in Lincoln, Nebraska. I would be happy to come entertain anything, any place that's clean and family friendly for you. But find me under that hypnotist, okay? The reason why I picked that hypnotist on Facebook. <laughs> what? That hypnotist on Facebook. Yeah. That hypnotist.
say by Tuesday, I would guess, maybe even Monday. Do check it out. Let let those other post of nine suggestions go. Check on Facebook that hypnotist. I'll let you know when it does, it's up. Thank you very much. Have a good rest of the morning, everybody. Good night. Hey, Jane. Hey, JoJo. Happy birthday, everybody. We want to sing you a song. I don't know why Uncle Joe has this microphone in my mouth, but hey, here it comes. You ready? Happy birthday to you. Thank you guys, let's get out of here man, let's close it down.